Welcome back to the Working Faith Podcast, where we take a spiritual approach to career success. I'm your host, Jalen Isley, and today we are talking about leadership. I'm so excited to introduce Raul Salinas. He serves as the partner in charge in the Los Angeles office of Frost Brown Todd Alvarado Smith. And as a trusted advisor to senior corporate executives, Raul also draws upon his extensive experience to help clients create opportunities and overcome challenges in business, employment, telecommunications, healthcare, government, and international affair. He is a strong supporter of his community and has over 35 years of law experience. He's also alum of Loyola, Marymount University, and Georgetown University Law Center. Raul, welcome to the show. So glad to have you here. Oh, Jalen, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for inviting me to participate. Absolutely. And so for anyone tuning in for the first time, this show is all about leveraging the spiritual principles of our faith to positively impact the workplace and grow our careers. So, Raul, let's start by talking about your faith journey. We know you identify as a Christian. What are some of the core principles of your faith that resonate most with you and how have they shaped who you are today? Well, you know, thank you very much, Jalen, for asking that question. Let me just say that uh, when I was in college, I actually was an atheist. I, I had challenges with my own faith. I remember taking a class uh, at Loyola Marymount University on belief and disbelief about the reasons of justifying the existence of religions. And, and I have to tell you that after that class, you know, my whole view about religion and the role of spirituality changed. Uh, I attended Loyola Marymount, which is a Jesuit-based institution, and uh, also went into the best law school I could get into, which is Georgetown University Law Center, which is also a Jesuit-based institution, although the reason that they were Jesuit-based was not why I attended. But so I've been drinking the Jesuit punch forever and sort of not really knowing it at the time why I was doing that. The result of that experience has really shaped my life in a number of different ways. It, it has reinforced my commitment to uh, reach out to the underserved, to advocate for those in the community by uh, a number of volunteer activities. And that in turn has really brought to me a sense of uh, spiritual values, of uh, a great deal of passion in the work that I do both as a lawyer and out in the community. Amazing. And so tell us a little bit more about like some of the Jesuit principles. Are there specific like core tenets that, you know, you, that remind you or, or, or resonate with you as you're going throughout your day in your career? Yeah, I, I, so, you know, and I'm not the spokesperson for the Jesuit community, so I can only share with you my interpretation of what it means to live a, a Jesuit life. Uh, I, I will tell you that one of the core uh, activities that Jesuits do as a whole are to meditate, to place themselves back in the time that Jesus walked on the earth and to view of the world uh, as it then existed and, and to ask themselves, well, how would I have reacted you know, under those circumstances? So there's a sort of meditation, a reflective component to the Jesuit lifestyle, an understanding of you know, others and uh, their own perspective on life. And so you know, what has really helped me as a lawyer is a sense of, well, let me take a, a sense of the perspective that's being offered by the other side. Why are they suing? What is that issue here? What is the belief that has caused them to bring a lawsuit? Or why is there, if it's not a lawsuit based, if it's simply just a, a disagreement, what is it that's behind that area of disagreement? And I think that reflection, that ability to put yourself in the context of others is a core principle of who I am. And it has helped me to be a successful attorney uh, and it has allowed me to find uh, tremendous meaning there. Interesting. So I just want to make sure I'm, I'm hearing that the right way. Within your faith community, one of the core practices that you all engage in on a regular basis is taking the time to meditate and put yourself back in the time when Jesus walked the earth and how you would respond to or, in, or encounter those experiences. And as a result of that, you develop the habit of trying to understand someone else's perspective when you're encountering That's exactly them. right. No, that's exactly <laughs> right. 
Interesting. I think that's amazing. And so many people, first of all, everyone can benefit from taking a moment and trying to understand someone else's perspective. That is a, a core communication, you know, technique, leadership technique, like everyone could benefit from that. But your practice, your consistent practice of doing that allows you to just effortlessly move forward in, along those same veins when you're encountering your, you know, your, the other side or when you're going in lawsuits or when you're meeting in the courtroom or something along those lines. Yes. Well, I think that's right. And it also forms how you just treat with a, treat other people. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, yep. I run our, our Los Angeles office and, you know, I, even though I'm on at the top of our leadership structure here in Los Angeles, by my way of thinking, you know, we're all on the same level. And so I'm just as comfortable you know, putting staples on a document that has to get out by a certain deadline as I am picking up the phone and calling opposing counsel and trying to negotiate something of uh, significance there. So to me, no, no job is too small because we're all in the same boat together. And I think it's, it's a part of the spirituality that comes with uh, following the Jesuit traditions there. Absolutely. So you know, this is kind of like fortified your ability to be a servant leader within your office and the people you support. That's exactly right. You know, one of the, mm. the core mission statements is to be a person for other, right? And so I, mm. I have four, been blessed with four boys. My uh, wife uh, is someone that's an alum from Loyola Marymount University. This concept of service to others has, has become a very integral part of who we are as a family. It, it, divide, it de defines us. I, you may see me in a suit in a courtroom in a boardroom, but I'm equally comfortable, you know, traveling down with my boys on a weekend to build homes in Tijuana, for example, and and my boys follow that there. I think I'm up to home number 25. Oh wow! And this is concept of service for others, and there's a tremendous amount of meaning that one uh, derives uh, from those kind of activities. Excellent. That's amazing. So talk to me a little bit more. Can you can you share with our listeners like maybe a concrete example of when you relied on your spiritual principles to effectively lead? Yeah, no, thank you for that. You know, I, I will tell you that the reason I uh, became a lawyer was that I during college, I had this uh, sense of if all I did as a business major was to pursue money that when I was 65 and I was looking at the front porch of my house, the rocking chair, looking at the sunset. And I would ask myself, what did I really accomplish in my life? I would say I did very little. And so, you know, that really formed my impression that, you know, if, if I was going to have a worthy, meaningful life, it meant providing service to others. And I would tell you that I came at a crossroad about eight years into my career as a lawyer. I was working at a large New York law firm and it was fine. The money was great. But again, that wasn't my motivation. And I was offered the position of becoming an assistant U.S. attorney in Los Angeles, a very prestigious position offered to very few people. And I had to reflect deep into my own value set, and which was largely influenced by the Jesuit uh, community. And I, I accepted the position. And the very next day, I called the U.S. attorney's office and I told them that I was withdrawing my uh, acceptance. And part of it was that I'd... You know, I associated more with the underserved community. I associated with those that did not have a voice. And, you know, this concept of joining a team of, you know, that had all the resources available to it to prosecute whatever the subject matter was of their matters, of their criminal cases, it just did not sit well with me as a person. And honestly, I don't look back on that decision. It's been the best thing that I could have done. That takes so much courage. That takes so much courage to be able to walk away from what most people consider to be success or, or what looks like success to so many people and really adhere to the tenets of your faith to create success on your own terms. And as a result, you're helping so many people. No, and it, it's uh, it's been very gratifying. Early on, I learned how to form a nonprofit corporation. And I think in the course of my 35 plus years as a lawyer, I probably have sat on more than 35 nonprofit boards. I've formed a number of them. I was the founder of one of them. And uh, I can't tell you how gratifying an experience 
that has been. And as a result, you know, my purpose was really to serve the underserved and to get involved in those uh, activities that were passionate to me. You know, as a result of that effort, you know, my book of business has just grown tremendously because folks make judgment calls about people involved in nonprofit activities, you know, and lawyers get hired for two reasons. The likability factor, if they don't like you, you're not going to get hired by the client. And if they don't trust your judgment, they may like you, but they're not going to hire a class clown. And so through that nonprofit work, people make certain assessments about, wow, this person must be a great lawyer because they're a great board member. And so it really has opened up a number of doors for me and Mm -hmm. the wide practice areas that I'm involved with. I, I sort of have a very eclectic practice, but it has really been one that has been developed and, and uh, has grown as a result of the nonprofit work, which in turn was the product of my spirituality and my beliefs uh, of what it, what it means to be a Jesuit. Yeah, that's amazing. And I, and I feel like, you know, the more I hear you talk, first of all, everyone, his resume, his bio is like three and a half pages long. Like, we're talking to someone who is a committed servant of his community here. And that's excellent work that you're doing. And I'm, I'm so glad that you were able to make those choices that were best for you because people are really benefit. It's been a ripple effect. People are benefiting from that. But that's a lot. You know, it's, it's a lot of pouring out. How do you fortify your spirit? Like, how do you take care of your spiritual wellness? Well, I, I tell you, life is really like a chair, right? And, and there's four legs to it. You have to feed the spiritual, the intellectual, the emotional, and the physical, right? And so part mm-hmm. of that commitment comes from this belief that the Jesuits have about the cura personalis, the idea that you have to feed both the mind and the body. And, and I have to tell you, you know, because of the demands of my work, I may not always be feeding my body. And sometimes maybe I'm feeding it too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting enough of the physical of physicality there, but I will tell you that I think the uh, what drives me is a sense that you know just an internal check: am I am I living the way that I think is transparent? Am I being truthful and honest with people? And you know the, the hardest thing sometimes in these person to person relationships is just being able to communicate hard truths, right? And mm-hmm. so I've mm-hmm. developed a sense of uh, making sure that, you know, I'm not holding back. If I have to have a tough conversation with a, a co-worker, I'll have that uh, immediately while the problem is small. If I have to communicate a tough decision, I do that immediately with the client to help them assess their own situation better. And I think that, you know, that sort of immediacy, that sort of being transparent and being as honest yeah. as you can with yourself really does feed the brain and the heart, the soul. It it goes to all four of those components that I talked about. Definitely. And you said something so interesting here. I I really want to make sure our audience captures that because I think it's a great way for us to take a spiritual approach to leadership as we move into our next week. Can you say that Jesuit principle again? Yeah, it's called the cura. It's Latin. It's cura personalis. It's a sense that Hmm. you have to feed both the body and the mind, the sense of physical activity, as well as Mm. mediation and reflecting about where you are in life. And, you know, both of those things go to the heart of spirituality, in my opinion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, everyone, you heard it like this. If you're looking to elevate your leadership, consider that. Keep that in mind as you move forward in your interactions with your team and your colleagues and your clients, all of those things. Keep that in mind. It has been such a pleasure having you on the show today. Uh, how can the audience connect with you? Are you on LinkedIn or is there any other way that, or is there a website or any other way we can, you know, see some of the great work that you're doing? Oh, thank you very much for that. I am on LinkedIn under Raul F. Salinas. Uh, I'm also a member of the, the firm of Frost Brown Todd. My email address is rsalinas at F like Frank, B like boy, T like Tom, law, L-A-W. Dot com And of course, I'm here in the Los Angeles area. And if you type in my name and attorney, I'll pop up on social media. Excellent. 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 Well, thank you all so much for listening to Working Faith. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, all the show notes, information about our guest, and link to submit your career questions. If you guys have any questions about how you can effectively cultivate your career, certainly let us know. 
But all of that can be found at workingfaith.com. Remember to subscribe, rate, and share this show with others. And I'd love to hear your comments. You know that I, I enjoy engaging directly with all of you. So feel free to join the Working Faith page on LinkedIn. And once again, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week with more tips on how you can take a spiritual approach to career success and work your faith. Good day.